This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. New on Curiosity Street. Are we close to building machines that are almost human? And can new technology give us superpowers? Find out on Super Sapiens. And in 1919, a British composer wrote the longest and most complex symphony in history. Conductors tried to perform it, but failed declaring it cursed. Now a group of musicians will attempt the impossible, if they dare, on Curse of a Gothic Symphony. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Listen, man, you love our show. You know you can get it on the Odyssey app, and that means you can listen to it whether we're live, whether you want to listen to one of the the podcasts of our show itself, or one of the other podcasts like, you know, uh, Migs versus the World, and uh, what do you got going on over there? The The Megacast. Megacast, that's it. Geek Nation. The Broadcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of podcasts. And, of course, like I said, there's a daily podcast of this show, so if you you, you can't catch every hour of the show that you want to. If you miss B. Migs, you can listen to it later. Yeah. Yeah. All on the Odyssey app. Download it today and you get all the audio that matters to you. I mean, The Rock, you can listen to music, news, sports, podcasts that move you. Oh, it's Odyssey, baby. A-U-D-A-C-Y, Odyssey. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B Mix. Don't be a loser. So let's do some whacking! Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Whack it. And Steve induces for Beat Megs. (laughs) You got yourself a losing record right now. Yeah, you are so. two and three overall. But I'm undefeated in the eight o'clock hour. This is true. That's all that matters. Well, for right now, yes, it to is. To me, the, the, the six o'clock hour is like, that's like preseason. Oh, right, yeah. DJ? It's just getting warmed no. up oh, for, no, the, uh, the, for real the real, deal, real one. Yeah. It's, uh, I know what you're trying to do there, Steve, but the games still count. Damn it. <laughs> the first three months of beat leagues don't count because that's in the, preseason. In the six o'clock hour. Yeah. 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 Just in the I, six you o'clock know what? hour. I would love you guys to say that to Luke Wilson's face because he's the one that gave me the concept that, you know, you, you, you really. The first he few just games agreed with you to get you to stop talking about it. Uh, it doesn't matter. He agreed. <laughs> he didn't, like, come out and give you that theory. You gave him that theory. You're like, oh, oh, oh all right. Yeah, sure, hey, you know not? what? You, you say what you want to say, but you know what, man? Uh, all the pros know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. Well, let's get to our contestant today. We've got John in Seattle. John, are you there? I'm here. Happy New Year, guys. Happy you New too. Year. Happy New Year, Johnny. All right, Steve. Get out of here. Right. Get out. For those playing at home, John will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. John, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Ready. Who played the title character in the mid-80s film Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Matthew Roderick. Yes. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is celebrated in which month? January. Yes. What two states share a border with Florida? Ugh. Uh, Georgia, <laughs> Louisiana. No. Pass. Tom Cruise's breakout role was in which 1983 coming of age comedy? Risky Business. Yes. How many milliliters are in one liter? Ooh, 16. No. Pass. Who was President George Washington's Secretary of State? Ooh, Thomas Jefferson. Yes. Arthur Miller wrote the play Death of a What? 
Salesman. Yes. What is the common name for hydrogen hydroxide? Uh, bleach? No. Uh, man, I'll pass. How many sides does a Pentagon have? Eight. No. Five. Yes. The energy drink Red Bull was first introduced in what decade? 80s? 90s? Yeah, 80s, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correct. All right, not a bad showing. We'll see how Stevie does over here. Yeah, the uh, 8 o'clock hour could be another losing one for Steve here. I'm getting the song ready. Hold on, let me get that ready. Oh, well, right don't here. jinx yourself Whack. at that point. Oh, I'm, I, I If you put good. the song Whack. before the score, you're not going to come out good or anything like that. I don't know. Oh, I, look at that. That's an adage. I Let's almost had it there. I almost had yeah. it, and then it kind of fell off at the end there. There's a parable right there for you, kids. Uh, Steve? Yes, sir. You're back. Are you ready? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Who played the title character in the mid 80s film Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Matthew Broderick. Yes. yes. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is celebrated in which month? That would be in January. Yes. What two oh, states <laughs> what two states share a border with Florida? I go with um Wyoming. And Virginia. No. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Arkansas and Alabama. No. Texas and Washington. No. Tom yes. Cruise's breakout Woo. role is in which 1983 coming-of-age comedy? Risky Business. Yes. How many milliliters are in one liter? Uh, a hundred. No. A thousand. Yes. Who was President George Washington's Secretary of State? John Quincy Adams? No. Uh, Thomas Jefferson? Yes. yes. Arthur Miller wrote the play Death of a What? Smoochie. No. Oh, uh, salesman. <laughs> yes. What is the common name for hydrogen hydroxide? Water hydroxide. No. Um, uh, uh, vinegar. No. Um, bleach. No. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Steve, you lose Woo! seven to six. What did I say, Rev? I, These I, are I some cracking it. scores here, what man. Wow. <laughs> Johnny, good job, my friend. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Oh, you are this the man, John. Oh. Wednesdays in the 8 o'clock hour are also oh, yeah? our preseason. Yeah. Oh, you just got whacked, yeah. buddy. Oh, hey, and you get this, too. Now, there's a couple of things you're going to kick yourself for. Obviously, you spent way too much time uh, uh, with geography with the uh, two states to yeah. share a border with Florida. Why did I, I even waste my time that? With was, that? I thought that was beautiful. Beautiful work. It was. Um, does anybody have a guess on the two states? Is it Alabama and Florida? No, because I asked uh, that share a border with Florida. Alabama I mean, I'm sorry, Alabama and Georgia. Yes, I mean. yes, it's Alabama and Georgia. Georgia. That's what yeah. I was trying to think of. Yeah. I just couldn't get out of my head. People forget the panhandle goes all the way over. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would. I, my brain goes, I think it's just Georgia. I'm like, oh, I forgot the panhandle. Now, if you, yeah. uh, uh, if you uh, are a fan of April Fool's, uh, sometimes this is used uh, with the hydrogen hydroxide. We don't want to mention any names, but there was yeah. a show. And that, you're going to yeah. kick yourself on this because you said it. So close. But added a little bit water. to it. It's yeah, just it's water. water. Yeah, that was the swan song for a particular show when they did that April Fool's joke, and I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think we ever heard from them again. And then there was two questions you didn't even get to, which were kind of easy. Uh, how many sides does a Pentagon have? Five. That would have gotten you the tie Good there. Good job, Steve. And then the energy drink Red Bull was first introduced in what decade? Oh, you could have done this. 80s. Yep. You, uh, oh, you could have got yourself a win there. <laughs> yeah, so you could have. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. Wednesdays, they just don't matter. <laughs> Dude, you let in a couple of soft goals. Uh, you did, I, yeah, you did. I definitely yeah. grew it. Those yeah. reciprocal oh. goals there. Oh, um, yeah. uh, sorry for your loss, buddy. Nah, you sound it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sorry for your loss. I really think that, you know, the, your whacking today was perfect. Someone said that Risky risky Business was a comedy of question mark. Wasn't it a comedy? Yeah. I, I always thought it was. A comedy. I mean, it was yeah. a slow-moving comedy, but that was all movies back in those days. It's kind of like Jerry Maguire. I think Jerry Maguire is listed in a comedy, honestly. I, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can believe that. But it's not like laugh out loud funny necessarily. It's just, just lighthearted at times. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Jerry Maguire. Is that what it's listed as? A comedy? Jerry Maguire? It's a 1983 American teen sex comedy. That's risky that's business. That's risky yeah. business. Not Jerry Maguire. Oh, I thought you said risky we did, business. We did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My brain thought that. Okay. We, we've bounced yeah. around a lot, Vicky. I'm yeah. having a hard time. Yeah. Today's okay. not my day. Uh, uh, just today? 
It's Wednesday. I'm telling you yeah. guys. Wednesday don't okay. count. I was just, right. I, I, I'm forgetting everything today. Yeah, Jerry Maguire, yeah, Jerry Maguire is uh, classified as a romantic comedy slash drama sports film. A dramedy. Oh, drama, yeah. I think that's where we first heard the word dramedy. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. But I started hearing the word dramedy because of, and Jerry Maguire was the one that was always brought up to me as, oh, it's a dramedy. I'm like, oh, I get what you did there. Because there was serious stuff and there was some funny stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the, show me the dramedy. <laughs> yeah, I always just viewed it as a comedy because of the early, like, all those moments with him in, uh, what was it, uh, what the hell was this? Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding Jr., yeah. 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 Well, but then there was some serious stuff, too, you know? I mean, uh, you know, with him and what's-her-face, Renee Zellweger. Yeah, but there's also serious stuff in, like, Forrest Gump, but I see that as a comedy. Really? Interesting. Really? That's yeah. not a comedy. I don't think that is a comedy, Steve. I laughed. <laughs> I don't need, well, again, I don't, know, you know I don't what? want to know which Why am I talking movies at? with Steve? I, I, he's I, doing I, like the dance with Elvis. No. And then, uh, Science when he's movies, running I, football. When he's yeah, grunting. I I feel like, uh, and he keeps running know. and doesn't stop. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. Funny, yeah. yeah, okay. I'm, uh, I'm not going to talk this. Well, I'm not and, talk to you. well, you know what? I'm looking at Wiki and it does say that it's a comedy drama. But oh. on IMDb it says drama romance. Nobody, oh. nobody goes to IMDb. Yeah, let's go to Wikipedia where it's 100% reliable. Yeah, Pretty much. All righty. I'm just not going to go to Pretty much. I'm not going to Steve is what I'm saying when we're talking movies. Okay, movies well, I, and science are not going to Steve. Just saying. I mean, I was not wrong. Someone else viewed it as a, a comedy. There's comedic moments in it, that's for sure. And, you know, if they said comedy drama or what did you say, drama, romance? What did you say, Vicky? What did it say? Yeah, uh, drama, romance. romance. Trans, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, so nobody can figure out what the hell Forrest Gump is. It's got a little bit of everything. And, I mean, even Rotten Tomatoes says that it's a comedy drama. So Thank you. Whatever. All right, it's, it's, whatever, whatever, it's whatever you want it to be. If it makes you laugh, it's a comedy, man. All right, listen, you know. And not again, like in a weird, like, serial killer way where you're like, ha-ha. You know I mean? Like, <laughs> there's funny moments. I feel like that. <laughs> I would like a movie that can make me laugh in a serial way. Well, you got, what do you got for me? <laughs> Silence yeah, of the have, Lambs. Yeah, there you go. Good call. Yeah, if you're laughing at that, that's comedy. Yeah. I, yeah. Army really? of Darkness. <laughs> All right, well, Army of Darkness is supposed to be funny. Yeah. Yeah, every, I mean, th- those movies are supposed to be fun. Requiem especially, for a Dream. Especially oh, wow. Army. Army was totally Three Stooges. I mean, Sam Raimi went insane. He finally had a little bit of money to spend on the Evil Dead franchise. And so with Army, he said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, he even had Three Stooges moves in it with the skeleton. So it was just like. Yeah. Do you ever go like on demand or on like your Netflix thing and you click on like comedies and then they'll have like, like some random in there. And you're like, how are they viewing this as a comedy? Yeah. It's so crazy how that sometimes happens, though. I, you know what I, I, you know it's funny you bring. I never do stuff like that. I, I never go browse, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Really? Oh, yeah, because I always, I always know what I want to watch. I never browse for something. Oh, I wonder what this is. I, you know, if I see something accidentally, I'll, I'll click on it and go. All right, maybe I'll watch this, but I never do because I always have something to watch. Mm. So I don't know. Well, you can do that. You can just go and. Oh, you, you can know. pick like what genre you want to watch a movie in, like on on demand. Yeah, it's like, what, yeah. or you can do oh, like free movies stuff. into the oh, wow. Comcast one, and yep. then mm-hmm. look up comedies. That's usually what I do when I scroll for hours before I actually pick something. Oh, and it's like sometimes you're just like you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and be like John Wick, and you're like, how is that a comedy? Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, I mean, some some of those deaths are comedic. You know, I mean, you know. Oh yeah, but on demand, like we do that all the time, where we're just like, oh, I just feel like watching something lighthearted that's a movie, and we'll just click on the comedy section. Wow. I, and 99.9 times out of 100, we don't find a movie we want to watch. We end up just like watching like a Food Network show. Yeah. I, well, that's, I always have a slate of shows ready to go. Like if you go, I want to watch X, I'm like, oh, I got something for you already. Hey, like, speak- like I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't trust anybody but me, I guess. Speaking of... <laughs> Spoken like a true narcissist. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I am not going to randomly yep. let the TV pick for me because I've been disappointed so much. So it's like I've already got a slate of shows. I know what I'm well, doing. I'm not clicking a button where I just pick something randomly. Like, I'm scrolling through to find that movie. That's what I'm saying. But I already know. Like, oh. the, I, I, you know, that's what I... I don't browse. I, 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 it, which, so it's, it's, it's really foreign to me. But you know what? I'm the weirdo because you guys all browse. Yeah, you are. That's how we found out it was a Christmas movie we just watched during the holiday season. That was I, I've never. I don't know if I've ever watched it, and if I did, I didn't remember any of it. And it was super fun. And speaking of Matthew Broderick, is what got me thinking about it. Do you guys remember Deck the Halls with him and Danny DeVito? Yeah. No. I have awesome. no idea about this movie. I say awesome movie in the context of it being a Christmas movie. All right. Okay. You know what I mean? So well, on the scale of what? Yeah. You you watch Rudolph. Uh, we, we, we compare it to other Christmas movies we know. Bad Santa to me is an awesome Christmas movie. It's well, probably it's the not best. the Santa Claus, but it's entertaining. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's not a good example. Wow. The Santa Claus is not that great to me. <laughs> Santa Claus is the number one Christmas movie. 
Oh, please. It, it, it's so undeserving. Um, Vicky, what's it getting on Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> The Danny DeVito one. I know. I can tell by Vicky's look. Steve, oh, my God. Again, I should you, say that we had this on VHS, and I loved it when I was younger, but it got uh, a 6% on Tomato 6%. Meter and You're 30% audience. Such a great show. It was believable. Steve, it was nominated for three Golden Raspberry oh Awards, God. including God. Worst Excuse for Family Entertainment, You're Worst Supporting Actor Danny DeVito, and Worst Supporting Actress with Christian Chenoweth. They were all great in this movie. Uh, my brain can't understand how somebody with an amazing musical taste is so bad at this when it comes to movies. It is unbelievable. Every time you go, hey, check this out, 6%? And it's literally a box office failure. It didn't make... I don't care. Budget. I don't know. I'm no sheep, man. I'm a lion. You're no sheep, dude. When it you're comes not, to watching these movies. No. You, you, you're not, you don't even call yourself a sheep. You don't even qualify to be a sheep. You're not even allowed in the barn. I mean, you know... We, we, God, we, hey, Fred Armisen's in this. Yes, it's just a who's who. I don't see Fred Armisen actually touting like this I one said, of the movies he was in. It's a Christmas movie. It's not like... I'm not telling you... No. Like this is a movie you should watch. Fat Man was also a Christmas movie that somebody recommended to me, and it was horrific. Oh, oh that was the one with Mel Gibson? Oh, God, it was so bad. <laughs> it sounds about right. Oh, God. I, I mean, literally, I, I don't know if we talked about this. Dude, somebody recommended this to my wife, and say, and my wife doesn't like violent things. I mean, spoiler alert, Santa gets shot in the face in this movie. Oh, Let like, me, it does not happen in Dr. Halls. No, I mean, I'm watching Fat Man, and I'm like, okay, where is this going to go? Because somebody's trying to kill Santa, and they literally, I mean, it is a headshot, and they show him on the ground bleeding to death after he gets shot in the head. And I'm look, we're all looking at each other, it's Christmas Eve. I'm like, look at my wife, I go, your friend is a whack job, who would recommend this movie for Christmas? It was, oh, it was, it was, oh. That does seem kind of odd. Yeah, it was, oh, okay. Well, it was, yeah, it was you should have watched Deck the Halls. It's yeah. a great oh, yeah, right. I should have watched that movie. Yeah, that's what I should have watched. I keep hoping uh, for a text to come in saying, you're right. Oh, yeah, I love Deck the Halls from Becky in Tacoma. Becky, you know what's up. Thank you. Oh, Becky, thank you. please. Oh, she has good need to go, She needs yes. to go see somebody. <laughs> Becky, go see a professional. <laughs> Fat Man got 45% on the tomato meter, but 84% on the audience score. Boom. Okay, the audience is insane. That movie is is... <laughs> I mean, it, is that it, it, Gibson? It, yeah. Yeah, Mel Gibson plays Santa, <laughs> and uh, Walton Coggins, who I love, and a lot of folks know Walton from Justified, and he was also like the corporate bad guy in Ant Man. Um, still, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it, this is bad. I mean, it had moments where it was funny, where you go, oh, this is like funny black dark comedy kind of a thing. But I'm sorry. I don't want to see Santa get a headshot and then just see him on the ground bleeding to well, death. I just this, don't want to see that. This was a weird scene from the movie when Santa was talking to Rudolph. You should just smile and me. That was, I, I, I deserve it. it. Steve, that wasn't the most disturbing part. Because <laughs> you deserve it, Santa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this uh, this movie. Who <laughs> even thinks that book, uh, having Mel Gibson be Santa is a good idea? Well, Hollywood. yeah, I mean, really, when you think, I mean, well, this is, and of course, this is after Mel's problem, so it's hard for him to really, you know, get roles. Well, I guess people. it wasn't really, this isn't really meant to be like a feel-good Santa Claus movie. No, it doesn't sound like really, it's at all. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, but look, I mean, if, if Vicky said 80% of the people liked it. I, I mean, I could under, uh, I'm sorry, it just, I don't know. Oh, so I, say, I, if you love Deck the Halls, then you'll love Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Absolutely. It. That's a great movie as well. Watch that yeah, during the holidays. I've never, I've never watched it, so I can't comment. It had Sinbad in it. Yeah, again. Another uh, movie I had on VHS. Yeah, Sinbad's not my favorite comic. And Arnold, uh, if, you well, know. That's fine, because Sinbad doesn't say you're his favorite radio host, so there it all oh, works it's, out. It's mutual. There you go. It works mm -hmm. out. Boom. All right. Boom. You know what? He showed me. It is time for listeners on the loose. This is where you pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 917 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by Advanced Hair Restoration. Listeners on the Loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Be heard, but make sure that you be heard the way Steve wants you to. Yeah, just show some energy and bring it, BJ. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, someone just texted in about uh, Deck the Hall uh, saying oh. that was a great Christmas oh, movie. BJ God. is completely wrong. 
Another person wanted to thank you for the recommendation on 8-Bit Christmas. The entire family dug it. Oh, that, that's the hit of the year. Uh, everybody who's watched 8-Bit Christmas is just like, wow. And uh, it, it, that, that is a great movie. It is a fun one, man. Yeah, that's, I could see making that part of the tradition. Like, you know, every once in a while, just uh, bringing that back. It's a fun story. And uh, it's got a great ending. So it said, uh, BJ, you were correct about the ending to 8-Bit Christmas. It got me all, me and my wife flowing. I had yeah, tears, yeah. I'd imagine. Oh, no. yeah. oh not yeah. Anne. Oh. Not Anne. Wow. Sorry. You okay. never know. That, uh, wow, that was... That, what I the w- hell? <laughs> okay. uh, wow. Well, let's make it sure. Some people might yeah. misunderstand what I read. Yeah. No, we, we, we want to clear it up, that's for sure. Uh, that was a good one. I did see somebody tweeted, though, that they they uh, watched uh, uh, Santa Inc. Or whatever it was, which was that uh, HBO... Oh, that, that cartoon? Very, yeah, the very nasty. Well, it was like stop motion animation. Okay. It, it's, it's it's very much like Rudolph, that kind of animation. And um and Sarah Silverman stars in it and it it's it got lambasted. A lot of people hated it and uh Rotten Tomatoes hated it. 4% but I, hated it. That's what yeah. they, they got a 4%. And where well, if I remember correctly, weren't you the guy saying, "I oh, hey, want you check that out." I said to I said to Vicky should check it out. I was clear mm-hmm. about that. I didn't tell you to check it out. Well, he's still uh, putting that out there. My movie got 6%. Yours got 4%. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right. Therefore, and, my taste is better than yours. Yeah, uh, and I'm not going to try to tell anybody that Santa Inc. is is a, is a great show. And that was I, the average audience score. The audience hated it. I don't. The tomato meter, the critics didn't they, even bother. They're watching like, we're not f this. No. We're not watching it. Yeah. yeah, and the and and the so this person on Twitter when we because we put out there we asked on Twitter, hey, what's your favorite show lately? And somebody did say they love that show, and I was like, wow, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So there is some there's something for everybody. Speaking of shows, Steve, you know what came out last night that's brand new, and I was so stoked about. Uh, the new season of Man vs. Food is finally back with Casey Webb, and I was so excited. Oh, nice. Yeah, because they've been doing reruns during the whole pandemic, yep. and the first one back was last night in Newark, New Jersey. Oh, now I got something to watch. Yeah. There you go. Look at you. See? You got a whole yes. situation. Everything. The plan is coming together. Yeah. Look at that. I'm a fan of Casey Webb. I think that guy's fun. Dude, he's he looks awesome. Like a, he looks like a kind of guy you just want to go like take him to Trappers. Yeah. Do all you can eat sushi, because I feel like he'd be ready to party. How long has Casey been the man versus food dude? It's been like three or four seasons. At least. Yeah, and it started, yeah. but then and then they took a break from 2020 and 21, and now they're finally back with new episodes. To be honest, season. I'm waiting for the day that he just calls it quits, too. Because I think that, that that's, a, that's a very short shelf life to be the host of a show like that. Because oh, yeah. you got to eat like a pig. Yeah. And, I mean, at some point, someone's going to have to step in and be like, yo... I know this is what you, you know, I feel like that's part of why Adam Richmond had to stop doing it. Because, I mean, oh, yeah, he definitely, when he stopped doing the show, he looked a lot healthier. He's back up to weight, though. I saw him on a commercial for, like, some app game the other day, and I was like, oh, man, he's, he kind oh, he of put it back on. Back up. Oh, what if he got all mad to see that the success of the show continued without him, um, and it sent him down, like, some crazy spiral where he's doing these food challenges just for himself. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to get back. That would, be, would do. that would be, you just walk into his house, you go, what are you doing, Adam? Never mind what I'm doing. Like, but <laughs> it feels like, oh, look, turn away, turn away. <laughs> that feels like the plot to a really bad movie. It does. Like, or a bad mockumentary. <laughs> on Food right. Network. Yes. <laughs> that will get 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Steve will recommend it. Still better than the stupid shows you recommend. Uh, actually, Four most percenter. of the shows I recommend, which would be like 8-Bit Christmas, I got a good track record, all right? Mm. Yeah, I love how Steve is now just throwing the shade when it's usually the yeah. other way around with everything. Yeah, Rab, I'm mean, the tastemaker. Yeah, you are You are not a tastemaker <laughs> with movies. You, you're going to have to face this. This is going to have to be your resolution for the deuces, the year 2022. Oh, so now you're doing it. You made fun of B- Rev. Yeah, of, look at was, that, uh-huh. Oh, I don't think you caught the sarcasm in my voice, but okay then. There was uh, no sarcasm no, whatsoever. Uh, I'm just hearing yeah. the scratchiness in your voice, which mm-hmm. I imagine from yep. COVID. Totally. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's exactly what it's from. What, what else would I have the scratch? Oh, gargling hand grenades. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, you saw, uh, yeah, is that what you call it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, are you, oh, I see. You were going down a sexual road. No. Okay. No, not all right. at all. All right. No, I was actually just legit saying you have a scratchy voice from COVID. Oh, I do. Yeah. it's. Uh, I'm at that stage of when you get over a cold where you feel better than you sound. Mm-hmm. So, that's so where, where are you at. at now on the COVID list? Like as far as like uh, days? Well, I'm, oh, I bet there's a lot of people on the COVID list. I'm. You know what? I got a ways to go before they get to me. Uh, I Well... It's a tough one, but I will say that when I was, when I tested positive, that was Friday. So I'm, I, you know, the CDC now, people are mad at them because they say all you got to do, if you're symptom free, you only need to wait five days, but I'm going to wait to 10 days anyway. Yeah. And that means next, this coming Monday. You could play for I, the Seahawks now, though, if it's five days, right? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, I mean, 
But here's the thing, man. <laughs> Tyler Lockett had worse things happen to him than I have had with this with COVID. <clears throat> he was talking about throwing up and really he had a tough yeah. time. And no. Tyler Lockett is an athlete who's in much better shape than me. Yeah, but I think it just hits people differently. Some, you know, it obviously hits people differently. I mean, we we hear these stories like, you know, I mean, I lost yeah, somebody I, I, in my in my world that was only forty because of COVID. I mean, that, that's and, and yeah, it's how, so bizarre. A person, yeah, it is so bizarre because you know I you know I was led to believe that you know if you were on you know if you were unhealthy and that's what we were seeing. We were seeing older unhealthy people really get ravaged by this. It didn't mean that younger people didn't get hit and get hit hard like you said, but on average that seemed right. to be what we were hearing. Now this Omicron variant, which is highly contagious. But at the same time, the symptoms team seem to be milder. So it's a weird thing to get COVID. And everyone's pretty. I mean, my buddy said to me, who's like, you know, he's a guy that does all this. You know, he does all the reading and the research and stuff. And my doctor said the same thing is that pretty much you're probably going to get the Omicron variant because it's ridiculously contagious. But the symptoms are really very mild. I, I, I've had worse colds. Do you should really start trolling Tyler Lockett about it, man. I should, man. Like, yo, man, what the hell? Challenge I mean, him to what, a fight. I what still showed up to work, you, you baby. Yeah, so you had to miss a game. Here I am. Yeah. Here I am. Didn't miss Doing one game. Thing. Yeah. He threw up, man. I now like throwing up. I was like, when I read that, I was, and because I, I was reading the Tyler Lockett story right after I tested positive, and I'm like, oh, Tyler, I don't want to hear about this. Is this all going to happen to me? And, uh, you know, knock on wood, it's just been like I have a cold. So, so you said you just passed the five day mark. So, I'm trying to think of like when, 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 when do we hit that ten day or Monday? Mon- Monday. Monday is my ten day, uh, and, and we get to just celebrate. You know, you what am I run around? I, I think I'll leave stores. things. I'll leave the house. Probably <laughs> it would be things. nice. Yeah. Naked, dude. You have yeah. you say smell and taste things. I just got my sense of smell back. Oh wow! It took yeah. forever. And I'm granted, I don't have a very strong yeah. sense of smell, but it took me forever before I could even smell a fire. I've heard of some. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a bad thing, though. I think that everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's no, because, you know, for the longest time, I was just ripping ass and I just assumed no one else could smell it because I couldn't, which is obviously very, uh, very egocentric. But I was like, ah, I can't smell it. So therefore, it's not making a smell. Well, now I realize that wasn't necessarily. The yeah. Case. The and COVID I- killed the smell of my farts, too. I promise. I've always been sensitive to, you know, making sure I don't smell. And the problem is now is that I can't smell if I smell. So it's like, right. I, you know, I'm constantly like, you know, trying to put my, I'm probably putting more deodorant on than I probably should be. I just want to be super sure I'm washing parts of my body more so than I would normally because I just want to be sure that the odoring parts are not, because I can't tell. It's funny you say the deodorant part because there's nothing more embarrassing than your wife walking in on you as you have your deodorant stick right up on your nose to see if you can still <laughs> smell or not. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, like, yeah. It's a good check, I'm though. Just like, I don't know what else to, like, a I, candle. A candle is a good check. I didn't have a candle. Handy at that oh, you don't moment. Get a candle? Yeah, well, they're downstairs. I didn't want to go running downstairs just to smell a candle. That would have been probably even more concerning. Yeah, for my you got wife. the deodorant right there. Yeah, yeah. when that I makes when, sense. when I had COVID and I found out I lost my sense of smell, I found out because I thought, well, I'm home, might as well do my arts and crafts I've been putting off, like making candles. Uh-huh. And I started making them. I'm like, wow, these don't smell like anything. And that's when it hit me. I thought you were say you were sniffing glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sniffed everything like to see. No, but oh, then yeah, I grabbed I mean, the big yeah. bottle of the vanilla extract. You know how it's really strong smelling and uh-huh. couldn't smell a whiff and so <sighs> that's how I figured it out but I never lost my taste of my, my sense of taste which is good yeah of, of the two of us I've had to pick one or the other I'm definitely uh, see I was kind of hoping I would so I could lose some weight well just say if you can't taste it the calories don't count right that, that's oh yeah thing. there you yeah. go <laughs> I remember that, my doctor. That, that my is doctor, not flawed logic. That's perfect logic. <laughs> my doctor said, man, you probably will, you know, if you have a loss of appetite, still try to eat something. And I'm like, that would be great if actually I had to force myself to eat. Maybe I'll lose some weight on this. This will be awesome. And no, the taste is there. I've had no loss of appetite whatsoever. The smell's gone a little bit, but the taste is like, oh, yeah, everything is still yummy. Mm. So there you go. But yeah, so Monday I'm free. But, I, you know, the other thing is trying to get a test. I mean, you know, because obviously, yep. you know, some people want you to, you know, I mean, this is just to make sure, even though you can still test positive for COVID, even if you are beyond those 10 days. All the at-home ones are nowhere to be found. And- yeah, I, I've got some on order. And then the lines, all I'm hearing about are the ridiculous lines, as apparently it is just insane to try to go get a test anywhere, oh, just yeah. like a regular test. It's insane. 
this is not a good time to have COVID and try to prove you don't have COVID. Well, it was like it was um, downtown Puyallup. They were doing some testing, and, and it was like it was just like a it was like a zoo. It felt like Christmas shopping. Like the entire downtown Puyallup was like just traffic because yeah, people man. trying to get to the spots. So it's yeah. a dirty diaper. That's always a good test, Steve. Yeah, I couldn't tell that either, which that was annoying for my wife because she'd come home and say, did you ever change the diaper? I didn't smell it. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dang. No wonder she's like, no wonder your kid's not happy with you. You let her once. sit. Once. Well, once, as far as you know. Well, yeah, my wife would let me know if it was more than once. All right, fair That's enough. That's true. <laughs> All right. It's not, like, it's not like Tatum's time. Hey, Dad. Turd City in here. What's going on? Take Turd it City. <laughs> It is listeners well. on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Yes, this fine program down at Turd City. Two zero six four two one Rock, Texas, and seven seven nine nine nine. More of your calls. More of your texts at nine thirty three on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. New on Curiosity Stream. The Arctic, frigid, desolate, unforgiving. And without canine companions, early humans never stood a chance. Discover how man and dog learned to thrive together where neither could survive alone in Ice Dogs. Plus, why would a Nazi major be protecting and saving Jews? Against orders, against time. The SS major that sheltered and saved thousands of Jews. It's the good Nazi. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. So I just text and say, I know we now knee deep into 2022, or as the Rev would call it, deuces. Deuces! No, no, please don't keep this going. I thought it'd be fun to hear what you guys feel was the best part of 2021 for your own personal selves. It ending. Yeah. Wow. Boy. (laughs) Just like that. (laughs) What was that, Rev? It ending. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Really? There was nothing about 2021 that you liked at all? Come on. You got your house painted cracking colors? I guess, yeah. I guess. uh, And those cool lights that you have outside your home now? (laughs) I think, yeah, maybe the paint job and just working on the house, finishing out basically the the full steampunk bar and making my home studio. Like, doing that stuff, I guess, was uh, a a good thing. Dude, you got to focus on the positive. You got to get some gratitude in your life, man. I mean, that's good stuff. And you're like, no, no, no. All right, pressure's on you now, BJ. Best thing that happened in 2021 for you. Well, the first thing that shows up is just the ride, the, the crack and ride. I mean, we uh, they, the entire year was full of so many crack and fun moments, and mm-hmm. I really felt like we were on the ground floor. I, I have never been a part of a franchise starting like that before in my career. Day one, yeah, and um, that I mean, was we really- had the dragons as well, but I, I, you know, a little bit different with the XFL. Yeah, I, 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 hate to, I hate to really you know put the the kibosh on the XFL like that, but yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the NHL and just the excitement and the involvement. Uh, and they were really good to us. They, yeah. they, they brought us in and, and I really feel like 
We, I mean, I've never said I wish this could be the name of a sports franchise and it was the name that I wanted. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, it's just nuts. And Especially that, when we were convinced that there was not a chance in hell that it was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it really was, like, of all the names, I felt like it was the, un, the ultimate underdog story. And we got to talk to so many people, like, you know, like when they first got here. It's like as soon as the players were picked, it seemed like the next day we were interviewing one of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and just the, the relationship we've had with all, you know, everybody involved, you know, uh, Fitz and, and, and John Forslund and JT. I mm-hmm. mean, the, these guys are just, it's been so much fun and everybody's been so cool. Oh, I really, really got a couple I, W's, man. I heard an interview where one of the guys that writes for ESPN, he interviewed um, Ron Francis, the general manager. And then even like the ESPN guy was just like, no, you know, because you know, some people are like, this is still like, you know, I know that everyone said it's not going to be like Vegas, it's not going to be like Vegas. There's a lot of things going on that made Vegas as great as they were. There's a lot of X factors and we shouldn't get our hopes up. But no one expected things to go this badly. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, they're still close to winning a lot of games. By the end of the day, their record's not very good. Ten or so wins in 30 something games. Like, it's not. Not where you'd like to be, and the guy was like point blank. Nobody expected the goaltending to be struggling as much as it had. That's that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is what really surprises me, and I don't know what that is. But you know, as somebody, yeah, especially Grubauer, that you thought that was going to be the one thing that was going to be amazing, and you could really give a break to everything else. Well, like he even said, like the team was built from the goaltending out. Like they they expected goaltending is the core. Then you get some good defense. And then hopefully you score some goals, but you're going to win some really close games. Well, it's almost like it flipped. Like, we're getting the goals. Not every game, but we're scoring goals. Yeah, we are. Defense. Yeah. yeah Goaltending. Yeah. It's that immediate kickback. It's like we score a goal, yay, and then they score a goal immediately. It's like, what the hell? Just but it's a, wait you know, 15 seconds. Steve has talked about it. You know, it's a head game for goaltenders, yep. and it right now it, it is tough for the goalies. They are, they are both not in a great headspace, I think. I, I, mean, think, they, you know, I, I think they'd be the first to admit, too, like, that they've given up a lot of goals that they probably shouldn't have. Uh, and, and Drieger's been injured a lot. So it's been like... Yeah. Ah, I mean, well. look, and Joey, look, Joey, whenever, you know, he's, he was never expected to do a whole lot. So, I mean, you know, you can't he's really fine. put him... Yeah, yeah, and he's doing okay. You know, but, I mean, that's your third guy. Uh, but he's mostly in Charlotte, so he's not even, like, really a yeah. factor unless one of those guys gets injured. And that's the thing, you know. So, really, you got you, you this, you know, I, 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 I kind of was pulling for Joey whenever he was in. Like, wow, wouldn't it be great if he be the if he became the hot goalie? I'm, I'm, it, yeah. yeah, whoever. Not, but, my, my buddy yeah. Wayno, who's one of the emergency backups, put yeah, him in. Him he, he's very good. He never looks in soft goals when we play. But in spite <laughs> of all that, I mean, 2021, because we still, in 2021, until the very last month, and, uh, you know, we were very excited. It was a great Kraken year. So and I'm still excited I, I, for the Kraken. I still yeah. excited. Oh, I'm, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed there's no game tomorrow. Like I look forward to watching those games, much to my wife's uh, happiness. Whenever yeah. there's a game on, she's like, "Oh, good, another Kraken game." I'm like, warned you. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. eighty of them. Eventually, yeah. we're going to see yeah. them all. Uh, yeah. So they, so that that's I would say you know that's the highlight for me. How about you? Uh, how about you, Vic? What was the highlight for you in 2021? I officially got the dream I wanted since I was a little kid, and that's to have another sibling. I officially oh. got... I was like, you've been working with us for over 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually uh, 12 years now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what does your, uh, what, what your, your other brother, Juan, think? Because, I mean, you do have, about, you do have another sibling. Well, when we were little, we always asked our parents, we want another brother or sister. We want, we want oh, another one. the two of you wanted that. Oh, yeah, and then they became foster parents for a while when I was a kid, and then... As we got older, you know, we just assumed it was never going to happen because, you know, your parents are older. And I have a three-year-old brother at 32 years old. <laughs> and it's it's a very it's a weird late. thing. A little late. You know, you don't get to play all the little kid games that you thought you were going to play with them at that. But I mean, you get to I, do other stuff. I do. It's just not as fun. But it is funny to see my two brothers interact now because, you know, my brother's 30 now and they act like they're the same age. Like awesome. with, with each yeah, other. That tracks, like, yeah. yeah. I'm getting the vibe. It's not that the younger brother's acting mature. No. Okay. Because <laughs> like, when people see me and my little brother, they think I'm the mom. When they see the two brothers together, they're fighting and acting like brothers. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, he's three years old. You're 30. He's like, I don't care. He took my thing. I'm like, okay. You guys were meant to yeah, be brothers. That's, yeah. that's how you do it. But it, 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 in a weird way, like we never expected it to happen, but like the whole family has gotten closer because of it. Oh, and I it, bet. And it's been really nice. Like it's, it's fun to see this little person like grow up. That's and right. I forgot that you guys made it official last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big highlight. Oh, yeah. 
That's my, right. Yeah, that's obviously for me. It's a no brainer. It's a you know. I mean, oh, it's knowing me. Oh, you're oh, no. Thanks, man. Of course, like the, all the great opportunities I've had wrestling. I mean, like, geez, guys, you know, oh, wrestling, yeah. Dan Housen, no, War yeah. Horse, Zicky Dice, yeah. some big names in the world of independent wrestling. I mean, it doesn't get yeah. much better than that. And then, you know, those little two year olds been pretty cool too. I yeah. guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, cool. ju- it's been a blast, man. I have to think, but yeah, by judging from your Facebook page and all the posts and the videos, I mean, if that was if that's not a highlight, then you know what you're you're leading a double life because I mean that's what it looks like it looks like you're just loving this two year old kid then I get home and I just bang my head against the door she says no to me again no to me again no stop yeah. saying no she's trying to be cooler to me it's been that's been fun <laughs> well yeah, I mean you know like, she seems to like like me now it's I mean, well I, I at some point <laughs> She's going to realize that, you know what, there's going to be a magic power she has over you that she doesn't oh. quite have over mom. I think she's you're going to say she's going to realize she's stuck with this man in the house, so yeah. she better start well, liking him. I mean, a little bit of because, both Because, I mean, you know, there's not, it, 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 she can be the biggest jerk in the world, but boy, she can give you that look. And you'll be like, all right, what do you want? Like, you know, like, like everything's forgiven. I don't know what it is. It's just something about the, the you know, uh, a daddy daughter relationship that does, that does that. Well, we had like our doctor visit, like you do every, like now it's like yearly, which is crazy because it used to be like every couple months we're going to the doctor, have to make sure everything's good. But like even the doctor, she was bringing up some good points. Like, you know, now she's starting to learn like feeling empathy towards people and like, oh, you know, really? sympathetic. Like, so you'll start seeing, I mean, we started seeing like she's very empathetic towards like her snowman doll. And, oh yeah, know, well you know that's a big that's a, that's, that's a big part of Minnie Mouse doll. Dad, yeah. not so much just yet, but I think wow. I'm almost there. I think I'm almost on the same level as her Bluey doll. Almost. Oh really? Yeah. Almost. Wow, that that you you jumped up. I I did not have any idea you were at Bluey level. Are you sure? That's pretty amazing. Danny, you're gonna say it's your Les Paul guitar. Yeah, yes. that was a great. I mean, at the end of the end of the season, it comes made, in made it amazing. No, you know, honestly, it was it was Lily being able to come out here for to Seattle for the first time. Oh, yeah. right, because yeah. that was her first time being able to actually because we had a plan for way earlier, like two years earlier. But you know, thanks COVID. So her coming out here and getting to see Seattle and getting to see where I live and getting to be on the radio and stuff was just going to the sporting event. It was awesome. All of it was being so on the great. jumbotron. Yeah, almost getting hit in the head with a baseball. Yeah, but she still gets mad at me for not catching the baseball. But you know, whatever. If it was my kids, we mad I didn't get hit by it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah you know. uh, in time, you know, in time. Yeah. Oh, someone just texted us in. I did see this. I forgot to mention it, but uh, Rashad Penny got named NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Shout out to him. Just in time for him to negotiate a contract <laughs> with yeah, somebody right. else. <laughs> That's how that works, right? Somebody right? else is going to pay him. It won't be us. We won't pay Wouldn't him. Wouldn't that be pay the him. ultimate just... I know. I, I know. mean, uh, it's like... If I'm the general manager, like, you know, we stood by this guy's side with yeah. all of his injuries. We kept giving him opportunities. He has four good games and gets a big deal and leaves us. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah, I know. And... This is this is the, this. I mean, we are in the kick of your. We are the kick in the teeth phase of the Seattle Seahawksdom right now. It just feels like everything is going to be a kick in the teeth. This off season is going to be very interesting. I'm very, all for very it. Like I don't know why. Last year it was unnerving. All like the drama that was being created with the team. This year I'm like, oh man, this is like the ultimate reality show. Like I'm looking forward to it. I just wish that I was a fly on the wall to know like what's really being thought and what's really being said. Because you know, yeah, the, Russ is like going to give you stock answers no matter what. I want to know what, like he's really feeling, mm-hmm. like when he's in bed with Sierra. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Well, you, oh, you want to know what he's feeling? Not when, not like that. His okay. emotions. Oh, All right. Come I just want to be thoughts. clear because I think I know what he's oh. feeling when he's in bed with Sierra. I feel oh. like you know what? It doesn't take much to <laughs> imagine what things are. You know what's going on Don't and how we'll we see you in the morning. You know, yeah, Fine, Russ, what's on his mind. You know, I feel like uh, that's a no brainer. You know, um, yeah, he's probably feeling like the luckiest man in the world. I bet is what he's feeling. Like I want to know, like he's like just like f this, f this team, I'm out. Or is he like, like you know? Or is he Russ? Go Hawks! Right, all the time. <laughs> he finishes dinner. Go yeah. Hawks! I mean, this is the thing I like about this is what I like about Richard Sherman. You never had to worry. You never had to wonder. You know whether or not Sherman was bothered and just hiding it. You never had to wonder. And that's the problem when you've got these guys that just put that good face forward. Every time, because you know it's not perfect, and it feels like Russ and Pete get along great, but it's like, really, do they? They they never have a philosophical disagreement to the point where one guy's pissed. 
Yeah, you think like Russ leaves Pete on red on like Facebook Messenger or something like that? <laughs> exactly. I just uh, you mean you know. Russ's assistant leaves Pete yeah, Pete's right. assistant on yeah. red? Yeah, it's just very like. Well, uh, it's going to be assistants I, like meet up and just fight each other. Yeah, because they just have this un, like this built up aggression that they just need to let free. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is going to be a hell of an off season. You're right. It's exciting in a way. I you know because I mean we we haven't been here in a long time. But we say that. But I feel like it's just going to be just like every other. Like we think all this drama is going to happen in the start of next season. Pete's going to be coach. Russ is going to be the quarterback. Yep. John's going to be the, the general manager. Nothing is going to change. So it's all going to be the same. We're going to have like Bobby Wagner's going to be there. And, I don't know about that. You but. know, well, I, you know, I, it's, that's I guess yeah. I mean, the guys that we know could be out of here just because of free agency probably will be. Maybe a couple of them will stay. Uh, but man, if it stays the same, Steve, like if it's, you know, cause we don't have any draft picks, this is going to be, uh, unless here's the, here's the wild thing. What if we, what if we don't have any really good draft picks, but the guys they draft way the hell where they have draft picks are finally end up being up. stars. Well, what some of them they, finally oh, are starting to do better. Yeah. What if they get some undrafted people? What if all of a sudden it's the best class that they bring forward this year, even though it was never expected? You know, I mean, why not? I mean, because when we've expected them to do well, they haven't really done well. The, the draft class that Russ was a part of, remember, that was considered an epic failure. Originally. You're right. So maybe, and maybe that was, that's that was the class that changed everything really for this team. Yeah, I. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see. I just and we're going to talk on Monday with Mitch Levy. Our last, it'll be our last uh, Mitch conversation of the year, and we'll see. We'll see what he thinks after the last game, baby. Oh, I know they don't call it the hot stove, but whatever they call that. That, you know, off-season drama stuff in the NFL. So we, it's kind of exciting. So I said we need the Seahawks on NFL hard knocks. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I feel like this would be a good season for it. Think about it. It won't happen. I, mean, it, I don't it think, sh- I don't it think should people, be. Well, it's up to the coach to let them have that kind of oh. access. And I feel, like, I feel like in the past, maybe they were hit up about it and Pete shot it down. This would be a good year because this is a year where you went from glory to this. This is and and this is a good hard knocks. Like I, I would be very. I think a lot of people would be interested. How what will the Seahawks do after this 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 horrible season? But yeah. if we're gonna do. It, I mean, you gotta have. It's gotta be Russ. You know, unfiltered like Russ in bed with Sierra. Like we need that. Time All right. I think you need that. Steve. I don't think the NFL Network will do that show, but I think we can get like maybe I don't know what Vivid or or, or, oh, or, wow. or Max maybe Cinemax. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey Seattle. Yeah. Hey hey Seattle. How you doing? All right, well, um, yeah, uh, we have a, a very big question that has to be answered, and that is, what do Ryan Castle and Christmas presents have in common? You know I'm going to tell you at 9.50 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. And now... The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Christmas presents have in common? Your grandma thinks about me all year. You know what I said? Grandmas will always be like, uh, I got your Christmas present. Grandma, it's March. (laughs) Yeah. I'm grandma. I I saw something and I thought of you. See, my parents, they're the ultimate procrastinators. So it's usually around February. I'm like, Mom, Dad, thanks for the Christmas gift or the Christmas card. (laughs) Isn't it funny? It's the same thing with my mother-in-law. It's like it always comes late and she's always like, she frets over it. And you're like, why don't you just send the damn thing? Whatever you think you should send it, send it two weeks earlier than that. (laughs) Yeah. And they just, no, they just never learn. Oh, and of course, it one never text, gets there. One text said, with Ryan Castle and present, Steve likes to unwrap both. Yeah, oh, buddy. wow. How about a family in Central Florida recently went through their grandparents' attic? Uh, the grandfather died in November. The grandmother passed in 2015. And they discovered a big box of wrapped Christmas presents that the grandparents had bought them from years before. Uh, and how about, they guess they died before they got to give them to them. Weird. Well, must have been bad that year. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> They're like, screw it. They don't get these gifts. Right. Keep yeah, them up no, in the no, attic. They don't get them this year. Wow. Um, one of the now adult granddaughters opened her two gifts, and they were both pink Snuggies, which you would give to like a little kid. Uh, how about, uh, they were they, they had some cash in them, over 20 years old. That They hit some jackpot with that one. Jeez. Ooh, I got Man. the original Sega, finally. <laughs> right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Castle, he's up next, and he's got an original 12-pack for you. That's next. 
and Miggs play of the day. Boy, at 40 years old, when they introduced a new controller like that, I couldn't do it. Well, My brain couldn't figure it out. There's a little, I mean, yeah, with the buttons, I'm like, I'm really good and adept with the buttons. Uh, but at that point now, I'm. it's like I have to kind of make sure and like take a break after a while because I was I played so much Halo that I gave myself hand cramps. Oh. And I feel it was because it was the new <laughs> controller. Was it Halo? Oh, yeah, come it on, was Rack. Halo. It was Halo, Halo you guys. Yeah. Quote, unquote, perverts. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. Of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of your all of your information. You list all of your assets and all of your creditors. That's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities. And so the court hearing is just usually about a five minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. New on Curiosity Stream. Are we close to building machines that are almost human? And can new technology give us superpowers? Find out on Super Sapiens. And in 1919, a British composer wrote the longest and most complex symphony in history. Conductors tried to perform it, but failed declaring it cursed. Now a group of musicians will attempt the impossible, if they dare, on Curse of a Gothic Symphony. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.